so we're in my little town of Hardy, Arkansas. We're going to go in and look around a little bit in some flea markets. Not going to stay around very long. Got a lot to do on the homestead today. But I'm here and I'm going to look around. So let's go in and see what we can see. I just seen this, and I want to show y'all. These are little, these are what we call rag balls. It's just uh, strips of material wrapped around a ball or styrofoam ball. But I really like this. This is a candy cane wrapped in material, and it's just really cute. I'm going to make some of these. I really like this. Good idea. So we are back from the flea market, and I did pick up a few things. At the end of the video, I'm going to show you what I ended up bringing home with me. <laughs> I couldn't help it. Anyways, you hear the bird outside the window. I think he's mad at me for some reason. Anyways, we're going to make a stew. I was out of any kind of uh, stew meat, whether it was beef or deer. So when I got done to flea markets, I run up to the little 
local grocery store. And uh, wow, stew meat is ridiculous high. So I went down and looked at the roast. Well, they didn't have a chuck roast, and that would have been what I would have wanted uh, to make my stew meat out of. But stew meat was six fifty nine a pound. I like to flip out because I've not bought stew meat at the store, and I couldn't tell you when because I've always got it out in the freezer. But uh, so I went on down. I found a a rump roast. I think they had a few rump roast and maybe a sir, some sirloin or something. I can't remember. But the rump roast was three fifty nine a pound versus the stew meat that was six fifty nine a pound. Just because they cut it up for you? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> but that was just unreal to me. So anyways, I got this roast and uh, we're going to cut it up in a stew meat and we're going to make us a pot, a comforting stew. It's a kind of a chilly, rainy day today outside, so it's really going to be good. So let's get started. Well, that was just so unreal to me how much uh, stew meat was. And most of the time, you really don't even know what it's, you know, what they, I'm sure they cut it up out of the bits and ends that they have left. But this is a, an arm roast, a rump roast or something. I'm pretty I think it was a rump roast. But uh, I'm gonna cut this fat off the, the side here. Now the reason that I like to buy or have butchered the, uh, I always make sure that I get the chuck roast. I don't have that ground into hamburger because to me it's my favorite uh, roast because it's really marbled up good. And that's what gives your meat a lot of flavor. I didn't cut that off very good. I'll have to kind of trim that. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save about $3 a pound and I'm gonna cut up my own stew meat and this will make us a couple of stews or it's gonna make me a big pot that I can warm up again tomorrow for after church. So I'm thinking that I'm just gonna make a big pot. That way somebody comes over to eat for lunch, there'll be plenty. We'll make us a big pan of cornbread to go with it. And we'll be good to go. Now I don't know, um, I don't know if the price of meat is the same everywhere, but usually, here in Arkansas, we have a lot of cattle farmers. I mean a lot. That's all I've ever known. That's all Danny's ever known. But I can tell you meat's not cheap. Now I just had a, we bought half a beef from a, a local family that we love very much. We've known this family since we were young. Known their mom and dad and now they're a, they're farming, raising cattle and uh, everything else. Kids and chickens and they've got uh, an egg house or two or three that they take care of. And uh, we bought a half a beef from them. And uh, we should be getting that in about three weeks. And of course, of course, when you do that, it's the same cost straight across the board. And I can't tell you right now, because I done forgot what it is per pound straight across the board. We'll have to wait for Mr. Brown, because I sure don't want to tell you wrong. But when I seen that that stew meat, and I need to sharpen my knife, when I seen that stew meat was six fifty nine a pound, I like to flip the lid. Okay, I'm going to get all this cut up. I know since y'all watching me cut up stew meat, and then... Uh, I've got my my wood cook stove. I got it filled up and I'm trying to get it good and hot and get it going so we can start browning our meat. But I'm gonna be cooking this stew in the oven. And it's gonna be good here in about two hours. It's gonna be the meat's gonna be tender, everything's gonna be done, it's gonna be good. My Mr. Brown will be home by then.
Okay, I got my roast, roast cut up. You see, I got me a little bit of flour here in the corner. What I'm going to do is coat my meat with that to brown it in. That's going to brown my meat real good. And also that little bit of flour will help thicken your stew a little bit. Also, in this flour, I've got a teaspoon of baking soda. And what that baking soda does when you're wanting to brown a piece of meat is it brings up the pH and it just helps to it helps the browning of your of your meat. So I'm just going to mix this up. I'm going to put some oil. I might put some my leftover baking grease in my in my pot to brown my meat in. We'll get it good and browned up and then we'll cook it a while. We'll cook the meat for about an hour and then we'll put our cut up vegetables in there and cook it for another hour. I added just a little bit more flour to my meat. I didn't feel like I had enough. And uh, I added salt and pepper to my meat. I'm going to go ahead and add some. I forgot my garlic, of course, and that's very unusual for Miss Lori to forget her garlic. But I'm going to mix this up again, and we're going to... Now, you don't want to put all this in your pot at one time and try to brown it because it's not going to brown. It's just going to sit there, and it's just going to... Uh, that moisture is going to come out and it's just going to sit there and steam and, and boil and it's not really going to get brown when you load it up like that. You need to separate your meat so that it gets good and brown. So I'll do, probably take me two batches to get it done. Don't get your phone hot, Miss Lori. It'll shut off again. Okay, I'm going to start browning the stew beet. I'm going to do it two batches. Then we'll come back and we'll get it put together and get it in the oven.
I got all my stew meat browned up. So I'm going to kind of deglaze my, my pan here. And my wood cook stove, it's, sorry, I had y'all covered up my towel. The wood cook stove is, uh, I still got it cranking so that it'll stay hot enough and cook like it's supposed to. And I am pouring four cups of stock in here, beef stock, beef broth. You can use vegetable broth if you want to. So that four cups brought it up about two inches of liquid on in the pot. Now I can't get y'all too close to my stove where y'all shut off again like it did last time when I was cooking on the wood cook stove because the camera got too hot. I'm going to put the rest of my stew meat in here. Then we're going to add some a little bit of seasoning. And then we're going to put the lid on it and get it in the oven. I've got my damper open in the back of my wood cook stove, and I'll show that to you in a minute. And what that does is it lets the heat from the firebox, when you open that up back there, then the heat goes around your oven. When you shut it off, it goes up the chimney. So, I'm going to kind of deglaze the bottom of this. Get all them good bits off the bottom of that pot. And then we'll put our seasonings in here. Okay, I'm going to put about a teaspoon of black pepper. A teaspoon of salt. I like thyme in my stew. You don't have to put thyme in there. I'm going to put about a half a teaspoon of thyme. I'm going to put... a good teaspoon of garlic and I'm going to put um, two bay leaves you can leave your bay leaves whole or you can crush them up whichever you want I put I use bay leaves in a lot of my cooking I was going to put it in my spaghetti sauce the other day when we made lasagna and I was out so anyways, I think I put about three or four in there. But anyways, it's all going to be good. So we're going to stir this up. I'm going to move y'all back so y'all don't get too hot and shut off again. And that liquid, that beef broth and stuff is deglazing the bottom of that from where we browned all that stew meat. Now, I've got 28 ounces of tomatoes, and that's going in there. A lot of deliciousness in here already. Now, these are whole tomatoes. You can use crushed tomatoes. You can use tomato juice, tomato soup, tomato puree your home canned tomatoes, whichever you got. Now, I'm going to find my lid to my pot, and we're going to get it in the oven. I want to show y'all my oven temp. It is, it's between 350, it's about 375. And that's about where I want to keep it uh, in your regular oven. I always cooked it about... 350 for two hours so we're going to keep it stoked and keep it at about 375 So what I'm going to do is um, I've got an oven now. I'm going to let it cook for about one hour with just the meat and the seasoning and the, the good old broth in there. And then I'm going to take it out and put all my, my carrots and my potatoes and stuff like that in there. You can put uh, turnips. You can put sweet potatoes 
any kind of root vegetable that you like you can put in there and then we'll put it in there for another hour so meanwhile i gotta keep my wood cook stove i gotta keep it with kindling keep it hot and keep it going so we can get this stew done and it's gonna be good hello chickadees y'all ready to get out huh y'all ready to come out for a while scratch around come on y'all lay me some good old eggs already you did good for you you're not freeloaders then okay back here is the the handle i was talking about and you can open shut it this way i mean open it this way and then you, you shut it that way what that does is it shuts off the heat from going up your uh, the stove pipe instead it's going to go up and around your oven when you shut it off so it should really be a cooking now when you're cooking either on top of your wood cook stove or in the oven you got to keep it you got to keep that fire going to keep it at least 350 in your oven now if i'm wanting to get it on up to 450 for cornbread or something i gotta stoke that baby up even more it'll run you plumb it'll run you plumb out of the cabin but it's all good been in the oven for one hour and I cannot begin to tell you how good this house smells the meat's starting to get a little bit tender but it still needs about another hour everything's looking and smelling good so at this point I'm going to put me put my potatoes and carrots in here and you can put, like I said, any kind of root vegetable in here that you like. Just give it a good stir. I always put lots of carrots in my stews because they do cook down a little bit. And me and Danny just love, love cooked carrots, especially in soup and stews. Now at this point, if you needed to, you could add you a little bit more broth or water to it. Now earlier, I goofed and forgot to put my teaspoon of um, onion powder in there. So, teaspoon of onion powder. Now, if my grandkids were not going to be eating this tomorrow, I would have put onions and I would have even put some... Um, bell peppers because uh, we love bell peppers and I've got a bunch of them in the freezer um, I'd have probably put some sweet potatoes and celery and I don't know what all but I'm trying to make this just a little bit kid friendly because I've got a few little grandkids that they like their their carrots and potatoes and meat and that's what they like <laughs> and so that's what nanny does so what we're going to do is put our lid back on here and this is the same process you'd be doing if you was cooking it in a regular cook stove. We're going to put it back in the oven. And I'm going to let it cook for another 30 minutes. And I'm going to come back. And I've got some pearl barley that I'm going to rinse and get it ready to put in there. And then I've got some sweet peas I'm going to put in there. And then from that point, we'll cook it another 30 minutes. And it should all be done. We're going to whip up some of my favorite biscuits. I said I'd make some cornbread. 
but we had cornbread the other day, and I'm thinking, for some reason, I'm craving what we call Cheddar Bay Biscuits. And you can make them with uh, Bisquick. Or if you have some homemade uh, Bisquick that you make. In fact, I'm out and I need to make some up. So we may do that on a video sometime. I've got two cups of all-purpose flour. And I need two teaspoons of baking powder. I, I dearly love these biscuits. I just love the tenderness of it. Um, the garlic and the cheese and just everything in it. It just goes together so good. So that's two teaspoons of baking powder. I need a half a teaspoon of baking soda. I need one teaspoon of sugar. And I need about three-fourths of a teaspoon of salt. I'm going to mix that up. And I'm going to cook these in my wood cook stove. And I'm going to cook them after I get my stew out of my oven. But I want to go ahead and get it ready. I can even put these on my sheet pan and stick them in the refrigerator for a little bit before I cook them. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and put a good teaspoon of garlic. Let's see. I need... So I got my garlic. Oh, my cheese. <laughs> what do I do with my cheese? Did I leave it in the fridge? Oh, Lord, get yourself together. Get yourself together. Get yourself together. There it is. I need about four ounces of cheese, or if you like a little bit more cheese, you can do that. I've got some already grated cheese that I need to use up. I think it's a taco blend, but I usually, uh, I hardly ever buy already grated cheese. Hardly ever. I always grate it up. But this cheese was on sale, and we eat so much of it during the week on tacos and stuff, and I just could not not buy it, but I don't hardly ever buy it. So... Really and truly, you can put as much cheese as you like. It ain't going to hurt nothing. And that was more than four ounces, so. Now I'm going to pour a half a cup of melted butter. And just make sure that your butter's cooled. You don't want to put it in here while it's still hot. And I've got a cup of buttermilk. And if you want to, you like a little spice in your life, you can add you a little bit of pinch or two of cayenne or a pinch or two of, you know, some red uh, red pepper, just whatever. But uh, Mr. Brown and I are little wimpies and we just can't take nothing. Just can't take the heat. And that's how fast it went together. Now, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to melt me a little bit of, a couple of tablespoons of butter with a little bit of garlic in it and a little bit of parsley. And that's what I'm going to use. Um, I'll butter my biscuits, the top of them, when they come out. So let's get this on a sheet pan. Y'all, Mr. Brown, um, he bought him a used riverboat. And it's it's a pretty one. It's, it's a good one. Got a good motor on it and everything. And, I think he's satisfied with it, but uh, <laughs> as he's as he calls it, he had to do a little bit of modifications on it. So he's been doing that today, and then he called about an hour ago and said that he was going to take it out on the river and see how it's going to run because he's not had it in the river yet. So it's almost dark, and I told him. 
he better get in that river before it gets dark and get back out because I don't want to worry about him. So, that's what he's doing. And I hope, I really hope it runs good and does what he wants it to. Like I said, it's a used one. He didn't buy a brand new one. Them things are too expensive. But uh, <clears throat> Mr. Brown is a big fisherman. Uh, he, Mr. Brown don't, if he's not working, you know, he's hunting or fishing. Or he's sitting here with me talking to me, but, or eating. <laughs> but he just don't do a whole lot. So I never, I never say anything cross about his hunting or fishing. Because that's just his thing. You know, I feel like if that's what they're doing, they could be doing a lot worse. So if that's all they're doing, let them do it. Plus the fact that he brings some fish home. And we absolutely love fish. Okay. I'm going to let them sit there for just a minute. And uh, I'm going to finish them off. I'm going to put some on another sheet pan. And I'm going to put them in the fridge until I can get them in the wood cook stove. Okay, I've got a handful of barley right here, pulled barley, and we're going to rinse it real good. Always rinse your, your barley because it's got a lot of dust in it, for sure. But so we're just going to rinse this off, we're going to put it in our stove. I'm wanting to put my barley in. Now, the thing with barley, I'm wanting to use this barley to help thicken up the stew and just make it a little heartier. Um, if you're not wanting it to use it as a thickener for your stew, what you'll do is rinse it and then cook it for about 20 minutes before you put it in your stew. Okay, we got a handful of barley. I'm gonna put, this is frozen peas. I'm going to put about half the bag. It's a, uh, it is, I don't know, 13 ounces. And I'm going to put a small can of mushrooms in here. I like mushrooms in my stew. I'd rather have fresh mushrooms, but I don't have access to any right now. But I do have a lot of canned mushrooms. So I'm just going to stir this in. <laughs> If you need to add a little water to it at this point, I'm good. It looks good to me. Um, I'm going to put the lid on it, and we're going to stick it back in the oven again. And I'm going to give it... There's a whole potato right there. Miss Lori, my goodness. I forgot to cut that potato up. See if I can cut it in half with my spoon. Mr. Brown would have liked that potato. Um, I'm going to put the lid on it, put it in there for another 30 minutes, and uh, we'll see how tender our meat is and how tender our potatoes and carrots are, and it's already looking wonderful. Okay, all together two hours in the oven. You see how that barley has thickened the stew up. The carrots are done, the potatoes are done, the peas are done. It's all come together. Look at that goodness. Yum. And I think I heard Mr. Brown just drive up. Just in time. The biscuits are good, the stew is wonderful, everything just tastes so good. And yeah, I did come home with a few things. I think Mr. Brown won't care, do you?